Hello and welcome to another video by ES Repair. I am your host, Mr. Fixit. In this video, I'm going to be showing the new feature update to Windows 10 version 1903. Now this version was released on May 21st, 2019. If you haven't seen it so yet, don't worry. Uh, Microsoft is going to be releasing it, but they're going to do a slow release to make sure everybody can get the update without any problems. Now, there has been a lot of changes. Uh, there are new features, which one of them you see right now on your screen. Uh, this is what the Windows 10 feature update looks like now. This is version 1903. Uh, as you can see, it's a lighter color or a lighter theme than what the original one was. Now, they have also made some speed improvements, uh, did some polishing and stuff. They've added some new features. Uh, they made a lot of improvements, and one of the improvements I want to talk about is the Windows Update. Now, the update was supposed to have been released in April, but due to some issues that it was delayed until May. So, uh, if you want to check your update to see if you have it available, you can go down here in the lower right corner and click the notification icon and then go up here to all settings. Now it's going to bring the Windows settings up and you'll click update and security. Now here as you can see mine already has an update that needs to install which I'm going to do it later. And as you can see this is the version 10 1903. And I could go ahead and restart now, or I can schedule a restart to tell the computer when the best time it is to install this update. Now, one of the things that you'll notice, now they didn't do anything crazy or off the wall stuff like they did before. And if you don't see it on here, you could choose click up, check for updates. Now, if you still don't see it after it checks, uh, try restarting your computer and then check for new updates again. Now, if you still don't see the update, don't worry. Uh, there are, you can either wait for the update to roll out to you, or you can also go to Microsoft's Update Assistant tool to allow you to be able to manually download. Now, if you just had the one computer, uh, you can click Update Now, and this will go ahead and update your current computer. If you have multiple Windows 10 computers, then you could just simply do a creation media for Windows 10, and then you can use a USB stick or a uh, DVD to install the upgrade to your other computers. And it will save a lot of time if you have multiple computers that you need to upgrade Windows 10 on. Now, I will have a link, uh, the, the website sits up here, but I will have it in the video description down below. Uh, some of the other things that they've done is with Windows 10, 10 Pro Enterprise and higher users, they were allowed to delay the update or pause the update for up to 35 days. Now they've given the ability to Windows 10 home users. Here you can go up to seven days to delay the update. And if you need to, you could delay it for another seven days. Uh, you could do it in up to 35 days with seven days at a time. So you can do this five times before it requires you to install the update. Uh, change the active hours. Uh, this is something that they have also changed. Um, normally, you can have like your regular hour set to which you're going to be on the computer using it. Any time outside of that range, for instance, here it says 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. That means I'm going to be on the computer between that time frame. Any time outside of that, Windows can install the updates. Now, if your time on the computer fluctuates from time to time, then what this will do, if you turn automatically adjust active hours on, this will track of how often, what times of day that you're on and off the computer, so it would know when would be the perfect time to install the update. So if you do if you do not have a regular scheduled time that you're using the computer, this will come in handy to let Windows know the best time that it can install the, the uh, update to your computer. Uh, there has been some other changes 
to how Windows Update will uh, uh, install your updates. Now, this is some of the ones I've showed you, but there is a major difference that they're going to do. And let me go ahead and show you what that is. Uh, if you look to the right here, you should see a related links icon or a link here. Just click check storage. And what this is going to do is bring you to the storage. And what it is, it's going to show you how much space is being used on your computer. Now up here you see the storage sense. Uh, this allows a computer to keep track of the space on your computer. And if it certain meets certain criteria, then it will automatically start cleaning up old files and temporary files that the computer or you no longer need. Now here you'll see my local drive, which is drive C. That's your primary drive. And then you have, well, how much space the drive is. Now down here, it shows you a comparison of how much space is used compared to how much space is available. Now below this, this shows you the two primary things that will take up space. Now, if you want to see all of them, you click show more categories. And if you'll notice, this one here is new. This is something that they added to the feature update. What this is going to do is reserve a certain amount of disk space. Now, you can't turn it off. You can't change it. Microsoft's way to ensure that the Windows updates do get installed correctly. A lot of the times, if a Windows update fails, it's because you have low disk space. Um, it fluctuates depending on two things. Uh, it's going to depend on the features that you have installed. Uh, it's also going to uh, depend on the number of installed languages. And this is the way that Microsoft said this is supposed to work. The update always requires temp uh, temporarily some free space on your uh, download and install it because it's going to create backups. It's going to have space to store it while it does the updates. Now, when it's time for the update, it's going to have any unneeded operating system files that were in the reserve storage to be deleted. This will enable most PCs to download and install an update without having any problems of needing to free up disk space. That was a lot of the issue. You had to free up disk space in order to get the update to install. Another thing that they've changed, and this is going to uh, make a lot of you more uh, happy about this change because you know how crazy it gets. A uh, problem gets in, uh, is created and all it does is just gives you some cryptic message with an error code. The error messages that they're doing now are going to become more useful. Um, one of the things they did here, as you can see on the screen, is they're more detailed as to what the problem is. It also gives the ability to where Windows can try to solve the problem itself, or it will specifically tell you what the problem was why it happened and what you can do to fix it. So that would be more useful because it makes it easier. So uh, if it was a setting or a configuration problem, then it will tell you, okay, this was the problem. This is what needs to be changed. And that would make it a lot easier to try to fix a lot of these problems that you might run into. And that's a good thing. Now, you of course, you know about Windows Defender. Uh, it's been changed over to Windows Security now. And the screen that you're looking at now shows you the home or the front page that you'll see when you first open it. Now, if you go ahead and open Windows Security, uh, I'm going to show you some of these new changes. Now, if you open Virus and Threat Protection, uh, it's going to show you the current threats, which, of course, there is none. Uh, last time I scanned, any threats that it found, uh, how long it took, and so forth. Now you'll see here uh, protection history. Uh, what this is going to do is show you any kind of issues that were detected in the previous scan. Um, anything like uh, files uh, that's been tampered with or accessed by an unauthorized program and uh, other things that you will see uh, down here at the bottom you'll see virus and threat protection. Uh, if you click Manage Settings, uh, you'll see the real-time protections on, uh, cloud-delivered protection, uh, automatic sample submission. Uh, that's in case you know if they found something unusual uh, or suspicious, then they will send it to Microsoft and, and they can 
take a look at it. Uh, one of the new things they added is this right here. It's called tamper protection. Now, tamper protection allows the um, Windows the security to ensure that none of the security settings are changed. Um, if you change them, it will allow you to change them. But anything that is done by programs or scripts, uh, if you install uh, internet security software such as McAfee, Norton's, Webroot, Trend Micro, Bitdefender, and so forth, um, this will allow uh, to prevent any changes from unauthorized programs. Uh, if you get some kind of malware or virus on there, it will prevent them from turning the protection off but it will allow additional security like uh, other internet security software to make those changes. Now, the other one is the controlled folder access. Now, a lot of you may have not have seen it, but this actually came out in the 2018 fall update back in October. Uh, what this one does is it allows you to uh, control folder access to where you can tell the computer which folders are allowed to have access by specific programs. Now Windows does most of this automatically. Uh, if you turn it on, Windows will automatically check to make sure uh, the files are not tampered with or uh, any changes that were made that you're not aware of then it's going to alert you saying hey this was changed. Did you authorize this change? This will help control ransomware. Now, one of the things they've added is the ability to back up your protected folders. Now, this is what we'll be using ransomware's data recovery, and this is going to go to OneDrive. So if you have an account with OneDrive, this will make things a lot smoother in the event that you do happen to get ransomware on your computer. And these things are designed to encrypt your folders, rewrite data, to where you can't recover them. Well, this, in the event that something like that does happen, then you can still be able to recover your data from OneDrive. Another thing that Microsoft is also working on is they're working on towards passwordless logins. Now, this is something that they've been working on for some time now to make it easier to sign in. And what you'll do, if you go over uh, to Windows Settings again, go to Accounts, and you want to go to Sign In Options. Now, here, you'll be able to see all the available options that you can use to sign into your computer. And as you can see, they're all in one space. Now, you can do facial recognition, which a lot of computers, uh, especially laptops, can do. Uh, fingerprint, uh, there are a lot of laptops that can do that as well, where it just takes your fingerprint. Uh, you could do a PIN number to where you could just type in a little PIN. Uh, oftentimes, it's a four-digit PIN. A security key. Now, this would come in handy because what this does is you could create something like a USB disk. And what it will do is keep a key on, on, a, on the USB drive. Now, the computer will not unlock unless you plug that device in to your computer. Once it's plugged in, your computer is unlocked. Uh, you can also do uh, the standard password, uh, which you can do, uh, or you can do a picture password, which you can uh, swipe and tap your favorite photo to unlock your device. Now, you also have a feature called dynamic lock. And what this will do is you can use other devices that are paired to your PC. And any time that you walk away with your, with your device, it will automatically lock the PC. Now, as I mentioned before about the passwordless um, sign-in, um, let me explain to you how this is going to work. Now, you're going to be able to create a Microsoft account without a password. Now, instead, you just provide your phone number. When you sign into Windows 10 with that phone number, Microsoft will text you a code that you enter on the sign-in screen. After that, you can use Windows Hello to set up a PIN, fingerprint, or face login method. 
you never have to type a password again. Your account doesn't even have a password anymore. And you don't have to enter a code sent via text every time that you sign in either. You only have to receive a code on your phone when you sign in on a new PC. So it confirms your identity. And then all you have to do is just sign in with uh, one of the sign in options that you see on the screen. This is one of the things that they're trying to do. And Microsoft has been doing this for, for, some, for some time. Now, another thing that they were working on, um, let's say that you forgot your pen. Uh, for a lot of people who's been having some issues um, with forgot passwords and stuff, um, on your screen you'll see a thing now where it says, I forgot my pen. Uh, you also have sign-in options, uh, which allows you to type in a password, or you could type in a pen number. So if you forget one, try the other one. Now, if for some reason you did forget your PIN, what this will do is allow you to be able to reset the PIN number. You'll be able to brought, brought to this window, which has your email address and the wants you to enter the Microsoft account password. Now, if you do the passwordless uh, feature that they're offering, uh, I'm not sure how this is going to change yet because I haven't tried it yet. But hopefully, you know, if I get to try it then I'll be able to find let you know uh, how it's going to change but you know in the case that you do forget your pin number this will allow you to uh, help you reset your pin number version 1903 this is called the Windows sandbox now for a lot of you who develop applications for Windows or uh, if you want to test an application before you actually install it on your host computer, this would be a nice thing to have. Now, I must tell you that this is only available to Windows 10 Professional, Enterprise, and Education versions of Windows 10. This is not available with Windows 10 Home. Now, it is a hardware-based virtualization, and what it does is it does a copy of your installation of Windows 10. As you can see here, um, I'm running a virtual machine. Now, this is just an example of what it would look like with the Windows Sandbox. Now, you can add files, you can add programs, you can install just like you would on a host computer. However, there is a slight difference. Now, any file that you put on here, if you delete it, it will not go, it is permanently deleted. And you will get a warning message showing that it is going to be permanently deleted. It's a handy application because it's part app and it's part virtual machine. Now, if you've used virtual machines before, then this should be pretty familiar to you. Um, one of the things that you have to understand, if you put an application in the, in the sandbox, once you're done with the sandbox, everything will be permanently deleted. The next time that you testing again, this is mainly what the sandbox is designed for is for the user to be able to test applications, uh, whether they're developing an application for Windows or if they're just wanting to test an application before they actually install it to see how it works with the operating system. Now I'm going to show you the other things that they have done uh, to improve the functionality of Windows 10 version 1903 and some of the other things that they've also added and improved. Well, I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.